Hey pals, welcome to developmental meeting number five for the EFHL electric football basic rules system. This potentially will be the final meeting and I'm going to try to keep this one short. And the reason for that is I think we're ready to move on to the next stage, which surprisingly is not going to be to draft and write, type up and upload uh, a rule book. May not even do that because uh, the next thing I want to do is begin to record the tutorial series that I'll upload to a playlist on this channel alongside the advanced rules. And if I can keep that concise enough, there's no need for uh, a written rule book. So we're going to try it that way, and I want to see how I feel about that. Also, time is is limited right now. Time is precious. And uh, it's, it's going to delay everything for me to write the rule book, then upload a tutorial series. I'd rather get it out there on the, the, uh, on the Internet and then if I need to, if I have to, if it's necessary to write a rule book. It's so similar to classic electric football. Uh, I think I can explain all the differences in, in a tutorial series without the need for a 20 or 30 page rule book. Um, especially since the core philosophy with the basic rules is uh, I'm not trying to explain every single procedural uh, rule in the sport of gridiron professional football. Um, if, if, you, if you need that, check out the advanced rule system. That does that quite well. Whereas advanced EFHL creates an immersive and realistic and highly procedural uh, simulation of gridiron football, uh, the basic rules are, are simply uh, my attempt to improve on the classic electric football board game. Okay, There's the big difference between the basic and the advanced rules. But now, uh, the beauty is that they're both forwards and backwards compatible, meaning I can take... Uh, advanced rules, supplemental or core rules, and apply them to the basic rule set and vice versa. Because I've come up with some new stuff like the uh, uh, the, the new two-six-sided dice passing method, which is based off the 20-sided dice passing method from the advanced rules. But again, I wanted to stick with as few required materials as possible. A pair of six-sided dice, the most common type of dice that almost everyone has in their home. That's uh, was the core philosophy behind that. But there are only two things we have not covered in these developmental meetings, I think I should probably mention here and now. One, safety kicks, which couldn't be simpler. Instead of the uh, 35, you're kicking, I believe, from the 20. And, of course, it's a result of a safety being scored. And uh, instead of using the... Uh, uh, we we'll still use two six-sided dice, but instead of multiplying by 10 for the distance, you roll multiply by 7, the same as punts, because a safety kick is typically, typically shorter than a kickoff, okay? And... Um, there may be a different penalty for shanking, rolling double ones for safety kicks than for kickoffs. I'll look it up and I'll make sure it's in the tutorial series, okay? Uh, otherwise, the only thing we need to define is what happens when a figure falls over. Now, in, in basic classic electric football rules, if a figure falls over, they're, they're falling over until the end of the play, okay? In the EFHL basic rules, with the exception of the ball carrier, who if the ball carrier falls over, as has always been the case, the play is over. Uh, any football player on the field that falls over may be picked up and pivoted d during a stoppage with the following restrictions. They must be in bounds. They can't be out of bounds. Okay, And they must be unblocked. Only unblocked players may be picked up and pivoted during any stoppages. Okay, That's pretty clear. That's pretty definite. That's going to not only uh, allow offenses to execute more big plays, that's also going to allow defenses more opportunities to shut down those big plays on both sides of the ball, okay? And that's going to add just a little more realism. Typically, when a, foot, when a real-life football player falls down during the play, he gets back up and tries to contribute to the play. So that's exactly what we're going to do with the EFHL basic rules, with the exception of the ball carrier. If the, if the, if the ball carrier falls over, the play is over. That's always been the case, and that continues to be so, okay? Now, very quickly, this is for my own benefit. I want to uh, sort of dictate the different chapters in the tutorial series, and this is subject to change, but I need to start an outline and start penciling in the rules so I can begin to start filming these things. And it's going to take a while to film all these, okay? And I haven't decided whether I'm going to wait until it's all done to upload it at once or scatter it out through the rest of the year. We'll just have to see. I hope it doesn't take till December to finish this, but it could, because again, pals, time is a factor, which is one of the reasons uh, the basic EFHL rules have been born, because time is a factor, okay? So we begin with an introduction, in which I will uh, explain the core philosophy behind 
the uh, EFHL rule set, and also uh, go, go down the list of required materials, which we've trimmed down to an electric football set and a pair of six-sided dies. Okay, so that will be the uh, first installment. Chapter two will be uh, definitions or uh, redefining definitions from the basic rules. That will include front of base tackling. That will include the fallen player uh, game mechanic I just uh, mentioned. That will include mentioning that during any stoppage in EFHL basic rules, all unblocked players may pivot. That's, that's different than classic electric football rules where there are stipulations. Uh, my way is simpler, and again, it allows offenses and defenses to execute or shut down big plays as a result of doing it that way, okay? That also means fewer uh, dives into the rule book to make sure you understand procedures by doing it that way. Uh, the, more, the less you're looking at the rule book and the more you're playing the game, the better, okay? So the next chapter, uh, which every game starts the kickoff, so we'll go ahead and do the kickoffs in part three. And part four, we'll start scrimmage plays. So we'll say we'll start with the run plays in part four. Part five will be pass plays. Part six, we'll go back and look at the pitch out or the lateral, same thing. And uh, the next part, I've already lost count, will be uh, the scramble. Okay. After that, we'll do punts, followed by um, field goal tries, followed by extra point attempts, followed by uh, two-point conversions. That's, that'll be a very short video. Follow, now we need, need to remember some of the other special team stuff, like the safety kick and the um, onside kick. Probably better mention, split that up and mention those as well. Um, and then it's stuff like the penalties, the penalty system rolling two six-sided dice. That's optional. Um, snap checks, that is also optional. That only applies to uh, when the quarterback is lined up in shotgun rather than under center or when... Uh, you're doing a punt or a field goal attempt or an extra point attempt. Those are your opportunities for uh, snap, uh, snap checks. Uh, I should mention we should define fumbles back in the original, uh, the definitions chapter, part two, I believe. Uh, but then we could talk about fumbles again because there are different ways to fumble in this system. And uh, optionally, we can, uh, instead of flipping a coin, we can roll one six-sided dice, odd the defense recovers, even the offense recovers. We can keep it that simple, or we can drop the felt football from three to six inches above the head of the fumbler and then do a scramble for the, the ball, the same as a recovery on a kickoff or a punt, okay? And that's really it. Now, we, during the definitions, we will uh, address that uh, there's no running game clock or play clock, that it's 10 plays per quarter, regardless of whether it's a scrimmage play or a special team play, okay? And again, the penalty checks are restricted to scrimmage plays to keep it realistic because penalties on special teams plays don't really follow the same formula. And I can end the series with a, a mention that uh, the rules are forwards and backwards compatible with the advanced rules. If you're looking for a more detailed, realistic, immersive experience that simulates uh, the gridiron football to a high degree on an electric football game board, check out the advanced rules, okay? That's, that's, how, the, well, that, that's how the tutorial series will end, and I think we're ready to move on. Now, you're going to have to be patient with me, chappies. Again, time is a factor, and it's going to... I don't want to record one chapter a day or anything like that. Uh, you know, I want to get into a rhythm and maybe try to knock them all out in one weekend. I don't know if that's possible. Probably not, but uh, we'll just have to see, and I don't know if I want to stagger the uploads or launch them all at once. I know there's folks out there that if they get bombarded by multiple videos from one uh, person they're subscribed to at one time, that will prompt them to unsubscribe from the channel. So I need to be mindful of that as well. But looking ahead, once the rules tutorial series is out there, then I'll start filming offensive and defensive strategies. Now, I know I've already done that with advanced EFHL rules, but you have to consider that the strategies are going to have to be different for a non-multi-stop rule set as classic electric football is. There's up to five stoppages in the basic or in the advanced rule set not to mention any bonus offensive or defensive stoppages. So there's all these opportunities to custom tailor a realistic trick play or whatever you want to do using that rules. Not so with basic rules. It's, it's, it's usually bump and go, and, you know, unless you're passing and there's one stoppage or, you know, there's, there's no more, and if there's a fumble, there's a stoppage, but that's, or an interception. That's, that's about it, chappies. Um, 
So the strategies are going to have to change. I, I'm also probably going to use my own cardboard bases for this basic rules series. Uh, simply, and I'm going to mention and recommend the ITZ starter bases and the uh, required materials, but um, uh, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use rookie bases to pull off this basic EFHL rule set. Okay? So that's it. For those that have followed me on this uh, brainstorming journey, I appreciate it. I thank you for your input, and uh, it's time to move on to the next stage. So stay tuned at some point. We'll begin to uh, film and upload the uh, Electric Football Hero League basic rules tutorial series. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, pals. Talk to you soon.